All right. What's up, you guys? Uh, before we get started with the usual introduction stuff, I want to take a second. Um, you know, the show we're about to talk about is a DC property, but something huge happened uh, uh, the Geek World yesterday. And uh, yeah. you know, I, I just felt like we kind of needed to talk about it just real quick. So yesterday, as of recording this podcast, um, it was announced, revealed, however you want to put it, that uh, the actor Chadwick Boseman, who has played such iconic roles as James Brown, um, Thurgood Marshall, Jackie Robinson, and of course, most notably to us comic fans out there, the King of Wakanda himself, T'Challa unfortunately uh, passed after a four year long battle for uh, with colon cancer. And uh, I, I just want you to think about that for a second. This man recorded uh, or filmed civil war, black Panther and two Avengers movies on top of all those other roles that I mentioned after being diagnosed. Uh, that was amazing. Uh, thank you, good sir, for just giving us so much. And um, indeed, you know, a literal legend. You honestly fulfilled a dream for me, man. Uh, Black Panther is one of my favorite characters of all time. I've loved him ever since I was a kid, and I've always wanted to see him brought to life. And you did that for me, so I will be eternally grateful. Thank you, Mister Bozeman. Rest easy. Hail to the and king. And I mean, he made. Uh, I feel weird saying this as a white guy, but he made a lot of strides for that community and uh, helped no, that, push. I mean, that, that's, not, that's not weird at all. It's just facts. Uh, he, yeah, it was a big turning point, man. Like, uh, prior to then, you know, Black Panther was a huge superhero genre when it comes to movies because not only did it have a black lead, but it had an all-black cast and minus Martin Freeman. And also, um, I didn't notice this until someone who is actually part of the community pointed this out to me. Uh, the crux of the movie had nothing to do with the color of his skin. Nope. It just so happened to be, which also helps like push it, because it was just an... Awesome superhero movie about yeah, a team. It, was, it was a super yeah it was a superhero movie it wasn't a black movie and you know he he meant a lot to the culture um, both you know of course you know black culture and geek culture and it's just you know it's it's sad but you know what he gave us a legacy we'll always remember him and you know again we'll be thankful for that so I, I just wanted to take this this moment uh, to um, just show appreciation, you know, give flowers and our condolences to his family, yes. friends, and of course, other fans out there. Um, Indeed. And I believe that uh, we can just end this by saying one thing. Wakanda forever. Exactly, Brian. Wakanda forever. Yeah. Um, so give me a second. <laughs> that was a little bit of a somber note. I need to switch back. Yeah. Yeah. High energy podcast mode. One second. All right. Uh, what's up, everybody? You ready to have one hell of a good time? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, welcome to another episode of Channel Chasers. As always, I am your host, Jay, from TV Time with Jay slash Jay's Caldea. That's right. I changed up the intro because I am back on Fuck Blair. Oh. Uh, well, I mean, um, you can't really because it's no longer there. Well, yeah. And and also, I, I learned some tricks from some other podcasters I follow that gave me this tip. If I, it, you know, if I wait till past the first minute, I can say fuck on a YouTube video and not get demonetized. So, yeah, fuck them. Um, but, yeah, um, um, we back on. I mean, um, you can't really... Ask someone who's not around unless you're into that, which, uh... But, yeah, we're, we're, but, but yeah, we're back on YouTube. Uh, if you're watching this on uh, the YouTube version, um, 
I, I am sorry for uh, not being up to date with the podcast episodes. Uh, honestly, that's on all on me. I keep forgetting to remind Brian when I have the audio sent over. Um, I, 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 I hopefully I'm gonna have like the schedule more on point now. Um, I told Brian uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna test it out. Actually, I'm gonna see I'm gonna see if I can remember this time and, and maybe uh, since th- this is. Full- I'm gonna try and handle it. I put. A little, I mean, we'll we'll see. Hopefully, I'll actually remember. Um, but uh, if you're not listening to this on YouTube, this is completely irrelevant to you. Anybody on Anchor or Apple Podcast, uh, you know, thank you for listening. We appreciate you too. Uh, but I had to, you know, you know, get the uh, I'm I'm back message out of the way as well. Uh, so. Of course, joining me as always is my friend, my co-host, and self-proclaimed sidekick, Brian Kersey. How the hell are you, Brian? Hello, people. I'm all right. Um, honestly, my brain is still processing the news that we discussed before, but also simultaneously on a high because I just recently finished today's topic. Yeah, and... So- and- yeah, so uh, t- uh, speaking of which, today's topic, if you can't already tell from the title or thumbnail... From either the podcast platform of your choice or, you know, the YouTube version, we're talking about Lucifer Season 5, Part 1. Uh, there are only eight episodes in this first half, but boy, did a lot of stuff happen. So uh, grab a snack, grab a drink, put some nice comfy headphones in, and uh, get ready to enjoy some fun. So, man, Wow. Wow. Uh, we did do a whole episode in the previous version. Um, I, I feel like we're going to continuously say this for a while now. Um, but, uh, you know, usual drill. We did do a whole episode on uh, Season 5 in the original YouTube version on my old, um, now wrongfully terminated YouTube channel. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Either way, uh, we both really loved that season. Um this is a season. Mm-hmm. This is the, this is a show that I've been watching since it was on Fox, um, and um, you know I, I've always loved the show. I've always been a fan of the character because you know I was big into Sandman in high school, and Lucifer first appeared in Sandman, so um, you know been following the character for a very long time. And um, sorry, didn't mean to step no, on. No, you. go ahead. No, go ahead. You're good. I, I was just gonna say uh, then uh, with me. Usually, I uh, I'm a late bloomer to these shows, but with Lucifer, I kind of was. I mean, I dropped off for a little bit, but uh, I was there when it first began, and I was like, okay, okay, so uh, detective show with Lucifer on a network, and Jerry Bruckheimer is producing, which for those that don't know, he's a very infamous TV producer. And he was the uh, director of one of my favorite fucking Nicolas Cage movies, the National Treasure series. So, there's that. So, uh, it's like, uh, okay, so, uh, all right. And clearly I stayed mostly. And uh, then they announced that Netflix was going to take over. So and then we well, got excited. Well, well, for, yeah, I was going to say, well, first everybody got sad because Fox gave it the boot. And then, you know, um, as with like stuff like One Day at a Time, which we've talked about before, and Brooklyn Nine-Nine and stuff like that, there was a whole Save Lucifer campaign. And Netflix swooped in and saved the day. Um Yes, which is definitely very sad, though, because uh, it it was sad, though, and happy at the same time, because when you watch it, you can see, like, where they initially planned to end it, and then they actually filmed two more because they didn't think it was going to end. Yep. Remember? Yep. Those, those bonus episodes. Yeah. Um but uh, Netflix did save it and uh, made it PG. It made it not PG, I meant. I was going to say, it definitely did not make it PG. I don't know what show you're also, watching, um, And also, 
this is we have to address this. This is the only show that I've seen where uh, they said uh, this is the end, and then fan cry out poor. Oh yeah, we're gonna do one more. And then they were like, yeah. Uh, which, which actually, it wasn't even like a fan outreach that, like, you know, uh, made them be like, they're, uh, you know, oh, we're going to do one more. It was more like they had another idea after they finished five, and they were like, you know what? There's one more thing we got to do. And so they they are they greenlit it for season six. Um, yep. So yeah. Um, which I've never yeah. really seen done before, but. But I mean, I guess it has a lot more flexibility and, you know, it does bring in the numbers because, you know, Lucifer mm-hmm. is a huge hit and, the, you know, the Lucy fans are, you know, a, a pretty cool. Um, so, yeah. like, you know, I, I had a feeling I had a feeling that this was going to stick around for just a little bit longer because, um, I mean, they, they do seem like they're an they're not like rushing it or anything. Like all the character arcs are actually like coming to very natural places where you can see like the end is coming up for them. Like it's all, they're almost there. I um, I wonder if, though, if we're now going to do the, uh, the community thing that they always talk about. Oh, the six seasons in a movie. I would be so down for that. Um, yeah. Would be so down. Um, you know, before we get into spoilers, one thing that I will like definitely give Netflix major credit for, besides saving Lucifer, this show definitely feels like it's really using the Netflix budget. Um, me and Mimi were talking, um, you know, uh, just on the phone about uh, Lucifer itself after she had finished, and she called me after we recorded our podcast, um, and she was like, yeah, no, uh, I think Lucifer um, actually feels like it has a Netflix budget. Unlike shows like Sabrina, which, you know, you kind of see it, but it still feels like this could have been done on the CW. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, and that's not a knock at the CW because, like, Legacies and shit has done some pretty amazing things with effects um, and makeup and stuff. But, like, this didn't feel Netflixy, y um, um, like with uh, Sabrina. And I also love it, though, that uh, with uh, Lucifer... Like, the way that they prove it is you normally think, oh, they're going to, like, sex up female character or start cussing more, like, as a way to announce that they're more adult. No, they they announced that they were more adult by having their male lead yep. come, come out, out of- as, as naked, uh, just showing off his, you know, Tom Ellis ass. I really, I do appreciate that. Like, it, it swerved. Um, also, um, I, I do enjoy that, like, Lucifer itself, fundamentally as a show, has not changed at all. Due, no. Uh, due to the network shift, the writing still feels the same. Like, they didn't just force extra sex scenes in here. Lucifer was already a pretty sexy show to begin with. So, well, like... I mean, um, the they never showed it, but... The main character would talk about openly, like how he's had like orgies and uh, yep. swings both ways, and will have hours upon fun with either. Yep, yeah, yeah. So you know, this wasn't like a huge leap. So I, I really appreciate that. Um, these eight episodes, man, like I was thoroughly blown away. Like. Like I said, I thought, you know, going, like before going into this, I was like, oh, there are only going to be eight episodes. This is probably going to be a short podcast. And it's just like, no, nah, there's a lot of shit that happened, fam. Uh, they did probably- so much in so little of a time. And and the coolest part about it is none of it felt rushed. You know, you would think, no, oh, they, did all the, they did all this in eight episodes. They must have, like, skimmed through a lot. You know, not much is fleshed out. No, they had whole ass plot lines. But that's the thing. Everything was kept so tight, so concise. Nothing dragged. It just kept moving, and it was great. Yeah, and uh, for the most part, uh, there were a few things that I honestly uh, saw coming, even though I didn't want them to happen. But uh, for the most part, it went in ways you didn't expect. Also, there were nice subversions. So now... 
Um, we've spent about 15 minutes just kind of in the opening part. I feel like that's enough time to uh, give people enough ample warning. Uh, so if you have not seen Lucifer Season 5 Part 1, I highly recommend it. If you have not seen Lucifer at all yet, uh, I highly recommend it. You are missing Same. out on a gem. Like, Same. for real. So I guess uh, without further ado, spoiler yeah, let's alert. Get it. Nah, yeah, nah, let's get nah. into spoilers now. Um, so, first things first. Um, the introduction of Mikey. And I call him Mikey instead of Michael because he's a little shit, okay? Um, <laughs> but for me, when I think of Mikey, though, that makes me think of Ninja Turtles and... He's definitely not as awesome as that, Mikey. Well, well, yeah, but but he doesn't also deserve Michael. Michael, you say my, you call someone Michael if you respect them. I don't respect Michael. <laughs> yeah, I totally get that. Which is so weird, though, because he is such a he is such a despicable villain and so smarmy that he outdoes the devil. Yeah, and also this this proves to me another thing: British people named Tom can really play like a Loki type role. Because I was thinking to myself, I was like, "Hey, yo, is this like Tom Hiddles? Is this like Tom Ellis trying oh, to like no. audition oh, no, for cause, Loki?" Because uh, Loki is a lot more suave. Well, yeah, Loki's definitely more suave, but like, yeah. Um, my Mikey, Mike, he is so just—he's a fucking scumbag. And uh, you know, one of the one of the subversions that I am so happy about, um, because me and Mimi had talked about this uh, prior to uh, the season dropping, because we had just went over the um, the hell story in Sandman at the time uh, when we uh, when we did our episode of the podcast. Um, shameless plug, uh, but um, we. You know, we had brought it up, and I was like, yeah, um, my, Mikey's coming, and it's going to be very interesting. Um, but one thing that I'm scared about is uh, I don't want it to create this, like, rivaling ship faction thing. And then I, I don't want this whole, like, Lucifer's life being taken over plot to drag out for too long. Thankfully, Chloe was smart, as she always is, and was like, who the fuck are you? Um, yeah. She played him. She played him like a fiddle, and um, luckily, and he's like, like, how um, long have you known? Pretty much Basically the whole time. Basically, she knew. From yeah, pretty like much the, the whole second time. episode. Yeah, as soon as as soon as she kissed him, which was like almost right after they met, like. Well, she suspected after she kissed him, but then once she saw him with Maze, she knew. Yep. Because, like, Maze is somebody that Lucifer, like, he treats like a sister. Like, I'm sure they, they've, like, shared people. Like, they've definitely had, like, threesomes and such. But, like, I don't think they've ever, like, they ever would have sex with each other. Like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, and also, uh, him cheat on Chloe. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that that's for that's for sure as well. Um, but because yeah, I know I, that he's a very uh, permissive person, dri- yeah, mischievous, sex-driven man. But he's he's not a liar, and I don't think that once he's in a serious yeah, I, I, relationship, I, 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 I was, I was gonna say, I was I was gonna say, if he was gonna have sex with somebody, like he would just tell Chloe about it. He wouldn't sneak behind her back and have sex with someone. He would be like, "Hey, I'm gonna go have sex with that girl over there." Or that guy. You want to yeah. join in? Yeah. Like he would invite but, uh, her to, he would invite her to watch or join rather than yeah. like lie to her. And also one other thing that I was kind of I didn't say this out loud, but one thing that I was kind of afraid of was um that it would be like Cain all over again where he'd grow feelings for her. Oh yeah, thank God that didn't happen. Although the Kane thing was more believable, um, I actually liked the Kane storyline. 
I um, didn't say that I didn't. I was just yeah. saying. No, no, I, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm not accusing you of that. I'm. I'm just kind of saying, like, you know, with that storyline, it it actually worked. Uh, but it wouldn't yes, have worked. It, with, it would. It wouldn't have worked with Mike, especially because it was already done so well before. Um. Um. Also, another thing I want to just comment on is just Tom's American accent was great. Mm hmm. Um. It was very believable. It was very smarmy, but still believable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He definitely feels like your annoying little brother who constantly snitches to your parents. Um, like, he, he definitely had that vibe to him. Um, I really appreciated that. And I also liked that Mikey was a uh, like consistent presence all throughout the season. And he's just constantly just trying to like fuck and it's with like, his brothers. Like, just as you start to forget him and start to get he starts to get out of your mind, boom. The yep, thing with Dan. And just when yep, you he, start to think that he's out of your mind, boom, the thing's closed. Yep. Which is pretty cool. Uh so let's uh go uh, let's do this um uh, character by character and kind of just talk about like the different storylines all throughout the eight episodes with these characters. First, I want to start off with somebody that, you know, I'm not, I wasn't like, I didn't necessarily hate, but he was probably the character in the main cast I was like the least a fan of. Just, I mean, like, I, I liked moments with him and I like him as an actor, uh, but like his character, it's like, I don't entirely care about you by yourself. I care about you in the relation that you're important to Chloe and you're important to Trixie. Um, and that's, of course, Detective Douche himself, Dan. Um, God, uh, this, I, dude, I love Dan this season. I absolutely This season, love. he had a very interesting arc. Because um, the thing with Dan is that uh, he was always that character where it's like you didn't know. Like, I hate to say, say this in terms of D&D, &D, but uh, which alignment he was. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. un until yeah, because... Because there, because there were there were times where he went all vigilante justice, and then there were times where he went all like super cop, um, and and that was up in. And then when they stopped doing that, he kind of got a little disinteresting. But then they introduced yeah. the stuff with Charlotte. I yeah, I loved all the stuff with both like goddess Charlotte and the regular Charlotte. I really mm -hmm. really enjoyed all that. Um, it really endeared me to his character. And, uh, like, really made me feel for him. And this season in particular, I really felt for him. Because, obviously, mm -hmm. that's... Oh, and that's one thing that I really love about Lucifer. Because um, I say the thing with Supernatural shows, especially... Um, especially ones that, de uh, you know, deal with, like, celestial realms. You know, death, more often than not, doesn't have that much of an impact. I'm looking at you, Supernatural. Um, <laughs> but, uh... Like, Charlotte's death, like, it was huge. And, you know, it affected mm -hmm. Dan all throughout. And it will continue to affect Dan because it was that important to him. It still carries that weight. Um, you know, which is why I, I really loved it when Charlotte's actress made that cameo. I was like, oh, hey, it's Charlotte. Nice. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that was uh, it's pretty dope. Uh, also, one thing that I absolutely loved this season with Dan is the the, the bracelet bros. Oh his, yeah, that was his good. friendship with Lucifer this season was phenomenal. I love that they got to bond over hating Chloe's douchebag DJ X. Absolutely, uh, just great, just great. Yeah, loved that bromance love that bro ship i love his friendship with amenadiel and like him giving sage dad advice to amenadiel um really and also really enjoy that that bromance with lucifer that made it hit all the much harder yeah because when... he was he was really he was really starting to turn around on uh, turn around with him and he like you know like really did see him as a friend and then, like, you know, fucking Mike, he does his Lucifer impression. He's like, hey, can you, uh, go, you know, go grab something for me? And, like, I need you to come back real quick. And it's just like, okay, whatever, idiot. Um, and then he turns around 
sees the devil face and, of course, gets freaked the fuck out. And then he gets used upon by uh, Mike. And then... Thank, but After also, he starts praying to Charlotte. Yep. And also, also uh, another thing that I appreciate about like the pacing for this show, um, you know, in any other show, they would have taken a, quite a few episodes of just Dan not trusting Lucifer and Dan hating Lucifer. But Dan got to be an adult. And Dan was, and w- when Lucifer was like, look, Dan, I don't give a fuck about your problem with me. We need to save Chloe right now. And he's like, oh, shit, Chloe's in trouble? Okay. Why didn't you start help. with that? Yeah. Let's go. Let's do this now. And I Stephen really... had to stop him to say, hey, calm down. We can't exactly tell everybody in the precinct that a celestial stole her. Yeah, and, that, and that's, what I, that's what I really like about it. Like, Dan was an adult. And, again, that's just a testament to the writing and the pacing of this show. Like... They didn't drag that on, and I really appreciate that. Uh, Dan was really great this season. Um, yes, so next, yes, he was. Um, so next up, even though, even though oh, yeah, okay. I will say that mm-hmm. I would have liked to have seen at least one scene of him and his daughter together. Yeah, although, yo, Trixie has gotten so big. Oh, my God. Yes, she has. Like, it's crazy. Oh, man. It's always interesting to see child actors on TV shows, especially when they start out mad young in the first season. Like, you see them as, like, a little baby, and then they're, like, so big now. It's crazy. Which, uh, by the way, I think we only did get one episode with her. Yeah, it was was, was, was the new, it was my favorite episode of the season, the fucking noir episode, big shocker to anybody that actually knows me. Of course, the fucking... 40s noir black and, and white episode and i love the plot of the twist season. of that episode yeah that was pretty pretty great that we'll get we'll, was... we'll, yeah we'll, we'll get to there when we get to that character um okay yeah we'll get to there when we get to that character because that well, was mainly quick, about quick that character. side note for trixie herself yeah trixie is great yeah trixie's great as always uh so next up we're moving to amenadiel um amenadiel is always great I really enjoyed him this season as well. Um, I like that he got more interact- direct interaction with Chloe. The episode with the, the, the nuns was hilarious. All of them were thirsting mm-hmm. after Amenadiel. And Amenadiel was just like, oh yeah, I know, it's because they're connected to Dad, right? Like, of course they like feel more comfortable around me. They could probably sense Dad's presence. It's like now they're just, they're, they just haven't seen dudes and they're thirsty. And you're a very, well, very handsome that- man. That too, but also, but also the fact of um, that he realizes that it's part of his power. Where yeah, he, he can ref- he can re- yeah he can reflect he can their, reflect God yeah their their faith in their God faith. back at them yeah which makes him think well hey shit if this is for me then this muscle all then that muscle also apply for Lucy. And uh, that helps with the overall plot. Yep, that we'll probably get to later. Yeah, which I I, I really enjoyed that. I also love his co-parentship with Linda. I appreciate that they like they act like a married couple without being married because that's the thing about having a relationship. You fall, you kind of just naturally fall into those places without really like thinking about it and you know no one really makes a big deal about it you know if you've been together for so long and they've been together for years now um so it made a lot of sense i i love their dynamic i love them both doting and worrying about charlie and also like okay he's like a nephilim baby we, you know weird shit's gonna happen so they're like you know they're, they're thinking he could be super intelligent super strong super this super that um and at least for now because, you know, I, I, I don't think this is going to be the case forever. But at least for now, he is not showing signs of any celestial um, maturity. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see about that. Because, uh, you know, um, you know, one, one of his, uh, one of his um, you know, family does show up later, which we'll, we'll, we'll talk about at the end, of course. Um, so, yeah, Amenadiel is pretty great. Um, again, his, uh, his, you know, brotherhood with Lucy is probably the strong, one of the stronger relationships on the show. I uh, really enjoy it a lot. Um, 
especially like him covering for Lucy, like taking over hell for a little bit. And I love it because he comes back and like, you know, um, Lucy's like, wait a minute, how are you here? And he goes, oh, that's it was okay. He said, you know, you, you, you've done enough. Uh, hell only really needed a warden. And he said, I was, he said, I was good. He said, it was good. He goes, wait a minute. So you're telling me I spent thousands of years down there, millions and millions of years, and I didn't need to actually be there? And he's like, yep. He's like, oh, dad, damn it. Mm-hmm. Um, Indeed. So good shit, good shit. Um, so next up, we are going to talk about um, my favorite uh, side character of the entire show, um, Ella Motherfucking Lopez. Um, I love mm-hmm. Amy. I love Amy Garcia. Um, I've always loved Amy Garcia. I've been a fan of Amy Garcia since George Lopez. I know a lot of Carmen people are like, yeah, no, Carmen was better. I liked Veronica better. Don't at me. Um, but, yeah. Ella, man. Um, one thing one thing that I was really, really happy about with uh, Ella is that her and Maze, their friendship got more development uh, in this season, or at least this half season. And that was so much fun to watch. I loved Maze trying to be Ella and then you know, of course, you know, the, the, the joke from the entire show is that, like, you know, Maze can never get her name right. She constantly calls her Ellen. Um, and eventually by the end, she's like, you know what, Ella? You're right. And she goes, oh, you know my name. And Ella is mm-hmm. just so sweet and adorable. She's like, she is like freaking, like, you know, Gangster Latina Abby Shudo, like mm-hmm. straight up, like oh my god, I I absolutely love her character, uh, and, and I, I I felt so bad for her. I wanted well, to give her especially a- because uh, before we get that revelation, she talks about how uh, she always goes for the bad boys, and how she's getting kind of tired of it. Yeah, she dates all these thugs and criminals and all all that stuff, yeah. And then, you know, eventually she, um, you know, she takes Maze's advice. And she's like, just go for the dork. I mean, you guys seem like you'd be good together. And so she does. Well, well Maze doesn't really say that, but... Uh, she, she pushes him. She, she pushes him towards it, because, uh, pushes yeah. her towards it, yeah. Because she actually says, uh, well, I mean, if you go for all these guys and you don't, value yourself yeah then um, maybe i shouldn't maybe, maybe i shouldn't you. maybe i should maybe i shouldn't be you because clear, clearly that's not what i want um and that was kind of a little bit of yeah it was a, it was yeah it was a wake-up call like yeah tough love kicking the butt that ella needed to actually give a nice guy a chance but unfortunately for ella oh Ella. Yeah. Ella, Ella, Ella. I mean, it was it was a little I hate to say it, it was a little bit predictable. It was obvious. Did. It was it was it was definitely obvious. Okay, so we're gonna, but I mean this jumps the end and we're gonna talk about it in more detail with Chloe's part, but uh Ella's a big part of this, so I do wanna like address this part of it. So literally when this guy shows up, you know, at first, you know, not, nothing's wrong. Uh, you know, he just seems okay. He seems you know, like a regular dorky dude. And uh, but like the second, the second that he shows up, um, at the uh, at the fucking um, at the hotel, you know, what, no, at yeah, at the hotel or like you know one of like one of the uh, murder crime scenes, um, like that of the serial killer, and I'm um, I'm like, wait a minute, uh, okay, they're finding all this evidence where it can't be the guy that they're pinning it on. And it's you with serial killers, especially ones that are this low key and this successful. It's always the one person you don't expect. And I'm like, he's only been around since this killer was in. Tr- oh shit, it's him. Yeah, and my thing was, um, I love Ella so much that I didn't want it to be true. Yeah, same. And so it took me a little bit longer to figure it out, and then I'm like. 
Oh, crap. It's going to be him, isn't it? I don't want it to be him, but it's probably nope. going to be him. And then he straight up, like, turned into Ted Bundy. Cold, calculated, just sociopath, and, psychopath. And I thought for sure that the... Uh, that part of the thing that they were going to get to get him to tell the truth was that the the I love meatloaf was him break you know, basically I hate to say it uh can't think of a better way to say it breaking character mm -hmm. and that he actually did care for her but nope no nope. nada absolutely it was all an act nada poor fucking Ella they need to leave my baby alone man like. Somebody give that give that woman a hug. Yeah, she she needs a serious non bad guy love interest at this point. Linda, you better give her some free therapy. She needs it. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, so, um, speaking of and Linda, uh, please and uh, even though I said that she needs a serious love interest. I really hope that they don't continue the whole Dan thing. Yeah, that was gross. I, I, I did not. I wasn't feeling that. Um, and that I just saw as two people who were who hurting. were yeah who were both vulnerable and just like lonely, and you know found comfort in each other just temporarily. But I really is... want her to find happiness with another person. Same. I, I'm right there with you, Brian. Uh, but yeah, speaking of Linda, let's. You know, transition to Linda. Well, Linda went places I didn't expect either. Holy shit. Um, so, of course, Linda's worried about raising an angel baby. And, you know, that's a big part of her plot, of course. But you find but out... But then, those, yeah, then find Michael, those, yeah, Michael yeah, comes in with a plot and, twist. Yeah, he pulls out her insecurities and fears. And then you find out that those insecurities come from a deeper, darker place. And we and he's find like, out. Oh, there's more to this, isn't there? Ooh. Yep. And it's like, oh, it looks like you'll be going to hell because you got some guilt there, don't you? And it's just like, wait, what? And then, and, and then during like one of Maze's focus episodes, yeah, dur yeah, she just because, kept casually yeah. saying that she's going to end up in hell. And Maze is like, huh? Well, uh, you'll be with me, so okay. Yep. I mean, I guess I, I mean, I guess that's cool. And then she, and then you know, Maze just kind of brushes it off. And then eventually, um, because of like the focus of Maze's plot line, um, we uh, we end up, you know, she ends up confessing it, and we find out that she adopted. Uh, I mean, not she adopted. She gave up a baby that she had at a very young age. For adoption, which is understandable because well, you know, uh, she didn't just leave it up to adoption. Yeah, she did. Yeah, it she was literally. Worse she, than that. Yeah, she literally just walked out, like after. abandoned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is keyword for Maze and her story. Yep. 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 And uh, like, yo, kudos to the casting department because yo, I mean, damn. Holy, I, I want to know if that was her actual daughter. Like, I didn't actually look it up. But I was like, is that her actual daughter? Because, like, holy shit. Because, uh, I mean, damn. Like, it was spot on. Like, that was crazy. Um, But, yeah, uh, so that was pretty huge. And, of course, I, I'm sure we'll see more of that in the back half. Um, Probably. But, yeah. And now, uh, her, mm -hmm. her with uh, baby Charlie and... Uh, I will say that I did I did love that scene where uh, she's giving Lucifer and Chloe all this like sage relationship advice. Meanwhile, she's pumping. Yep. Also, <laughs> the breast milk. Also, drunk Linda is yes. always the best Linda. Um, oh, and this time we actually had a a bit of a variation to that because we had drunk rave linda yep drunk <laughs> with rave. the pigtails yeah drunk edm rave linda which is just oh man so good where she had like the hairstyle of the girl from spy kids <laughs> yep or or you know uh, if you if you want to go like over the video game reference she fucking had the juliet from lollipop chainsaw thing going on true 
Um, but yeah, no, that was that was phenom- that was phenomenal. I, I loved I loved all of that shit. Every time one of the girls in the group gets drunk and they have an episode, it's awesome. Like drunk Chloe and drunk Linda are both great. Drunk Ella love- is pretty much the same as regular Ella, so like you know, great, but like nothing too different. And also, uh, Maze is, I don't think she can ever get drunk. Yeah, uh, which I, I, I love that, um, I love that joke she has with Amenadiel, which, uh, I guess that's a good enough, this is a good enough time to transition into Maze. So yeah, I love her friendship with Amenadiel. Um, I, um, you know, they have a, a mutual bond with each other. And, um, I really appreciate, uh, this about Lucifer, because a lot of shows can never do this right. Of course, Maze and Amenadiel, had a thing um and yes they've had sex quite a few times but now they're just friends and they can just be friends and nothing's weird about that like thank you thank you you can you can you can have had you can have had a a relationship with somebody um and have had sex with them and still be their friend after it doesn't work out i gotta tell you i gotta tell you maze's story though especially with me hit very hard oh that, yeah, that this season was, yeah that shit was especially deep, because it involved uh like honestly probably my second favorite ship of the whole show oh yep yep um which i i was sad i was i mean we we knew from jump that that actress wasn't coming back for this uh this half um so so um like we knew that like n- none of that would be resolved, um, and also Eva's been through a lot. She needed to focus yeah, on herself. Yeah, yeah, She needs to figure herself out before she can really give anything to anyone else. I mean, besides, she's given you know a lot of herself to other people already with Adam mm-hmm. and Lucy. So, you know, I mean, uh, they've there's literal books that people hone in as religion. Which, if you do, I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying that uh, there are little in- timeless books about her relationships, so she's probably going to need some time to heal from them. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but yeah, so um, you know, like I said before, like Maze and Amanda Deal's friendship, I really, really enjoy it. Um, all like especially because Amanda Deal calls her out on her bullshit, and he's like, because mm-hmm. uh, she's like, you know, fuck Lucifer. He lied to me, he, and like, um, Amanda Deal's like, does he even fucking know that you're mad at him? And she's like, no. Fine, I'll answer the goddamn phone. And then he's like, Chloe's in trouble, and she's like, what? What do you What do you need me to do? And it's just like, oh shit. Okay, good. I'm glad you're being an adult, Maze. Everybody. Although I did not like, I I understood it, but I did not like how they ended it with her. Yeah. Yeah, same. I, I definitely agree with you. Um, so her whole plot line, as we alluded to, has to deal with her um, abandonment issues because she felt like she was abandoned by Eve after her adorable serenade love confession from last season um, to fucking Wonderwall, of all things. Um, which crazy um and uh she did and that ended with her saying that she did feel things towards her but she still had she to, leave. to yeah yeah she, she still had to leave because she she said it wasn't fair to her to just jump into something brand new before she had really figured out herself so which is understandable and very mature again being an adult really yes. appreciated that um but, but uh, no, that, that just... obviously cut that that cut me pretty deep and it you know triggered some other like unresolved problems well, from her childhood i mean uh, especially with the fact that also what helped trigger this was right after right after eve said that she needed to focus on herself yeah lucifer, lucifer went to hell yeah lucifer went to hell without her and so lucifer the person who like literally has been by her side like legit like 100 percent from day one um just up and left her without saying anything. Although, I do, once again, like, this shows maturity on Lucy's part. I, when Lucy 
does meet up with her and she like yells at him and she goes, you know, you went, to, how could you um, go to hell without me? He goes, you're not my servant anymore, Maze. Uh, you can go wherever you want to go. And she goes, you didn't take me with you. It's like, yeah. I don't. Yeah, see, but I, I don't but have I, wings, idiot. Yeah, she's like, like, I don't have wings. Yeah, but a mena deal does. He could have taken you at any time. And she's just like, oh, shit. Which, uh, to be fair, to be fair, by the end, she's angry with him, but not for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she finds out later on, because Mikey, being the smarmy, conniving asshole that he is, um, decides to try and turn Maze against Lucifer. By, by, by using by using uh, Maze's best human buddy. Yep. Trixie. And and targeting her one sore spot. Uh which is her mom, Lilith, who, you and know, we, so, we, 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 uh, we of course got brief mention of her last season because Eve was involved here. And, you know, Eve and Lilith got beef, of course. Um, but, uh, yeah, so uh, this leads us into my favorite episode of the entire season, the noir episode, which is, you know, done in the, uh, like, framing device of Trixie getting a story from Lucifer about the origin of his ring. Um, because because Game Night is uh, canceled due to some Deck Star drama. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, it was weaved so organically, too. I really appreciate that. Um, it didn't feel like, oh, yeah, we're just doing this just to do this. No, nah, it, it actually felt natural with the story. Um, and so, like... We end up seeing that Lilith has been living an immortal life for a few uh, millennia now, um, and currently she's a uh, popular jazz lounge uh, singer at this like mafia nightclub. And essentially, people are trying to steal her ring in order to try and gain immortality um, because they think that's the reason why, like she is never able to die despite being, you know, caught in the crosshairs between these two rival mob factions and, you know, all this other stuff. Um, and um, I-, I love this because the narrative changes um, in the very beginning. Because at-, at first, the detective in the story that um, Lucy, like, hires to help him out is being played by Dan. Um, and no. Is it Dan? It's not Dan? I no. Dan. Dan is... Dan is... Dan plays another bigger role in the flashback. Oh, because uh, oh yeah, it, oh yeah, D- Dan was, was the D- Dan was the uh, the guy that got shot at the end, right? Yeah. No, Dan was the killer. Oh, gotcha. Because he was the the Wiener King who wanted to be immortal. Remember? Yeah, and then he got shot at the end after wearing the ring, putting the ring on. Oh yeah, that's right. That's what I'm saying. You're right about that. My bad. But, but yeah, that was really, that was Dan. And uh, it was just Rando who was playing yeah. him. And, yeah, and, and, and then, yeah, Trixie was like, well, my mom bus, co- uh, you know, bus criminal. They want my hand to be a woman. And so, like, Chloe ends up playing the role of the detective, which I thought was really cool. And, and this is where we get to see Charlotte's actress again as the detective's, like, wife or girlfriend, and, I guess. Yeah, wife. Oh, his wife. Okay, wife. Yeah, cool. And I do, and I do like it though, because uh, at when another character is introduced, it, she, it, he is a mob boss. Yep, played, and he's played by Ella. Yeah, played by mm-hmm. Ella, and uh, and Trixie actually calls him on it, and he's like, yeah, "What she, you she said go, she, to be." Yeah, she she was she was like, wait, that's a guy's name. Well, why is it why why is she why is it a woman? He goes, wait. Uh, he goes, make up your mind, child. You wanted gender diversity, so I'm giving you gender diversity. Are you complaining? She goes, ah, oh, no. Continue. Yep. And I love so, uh, and just continuing the Ella love. I love it when the she's just playing the mob bus and she's talking like this. Yep, yeah, it's it's a very much like a fucking Don Corleone type deal. 
which uh, I, I was really about that. Mm. Um, and so, like, eventually, we um, we get to the end, and we find out that, like, Maeve actually kind of enjoys human life, and she realizes what makes life so precious to humans is because they know that there's an end on some, like, very much some good place type shit. Um, and so she's like, you know what, Lucy? Here. She transfers her immortality into the ring, and she gives it to him. Mm-hmm. Which, I have a theory, right? So, I think... Now, I know, like, Michael used, uh, used Lucifer's, uh, regaining of, uh, invuln- like, regaining of invulnerability around Chloe to make Chloe a uh, second guess herself. I think that was a lie. And I think the reason he has the invulnerability, um, is that, I don't know how, but somehow the magic in Lilith's ring got activated. And so he is fucking immortal. Cause he has the hmm. ring on. Because they I specifically brought up, because he, sp- they specifically brought up the ring, and she physically put her immortality in it. And when he got like shot by Dan, you see they do a close up, and the ring is like sort like you know doing its thing, and it's glowing black. So like, I definitely think the ring has something to do with that, and it was just a lie from Michael to get into Chloe's head. Um, oh, oh yeah, indeed. Um... But yeah. So, um, because she uh, gives away her immortality, of course, she that means she ages in real time from that point onwards. And so, um, she, uh, you know, he's like, well, do you, uh, Lucy says, you know, do you want me to bring your children up to let you uh, say goodbye? And then Lilith is like, no, 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 no. Um, what they have in hell is perfect for them. They don't get attached. They don't have families. Don't have, they don't have any of that. They don't have an opportunity to be hurt. They don't have to feel what I've felt. This this is what they need to survive, to be better than me. And so, uh, you know, she says, you know, you have to promise me no matter what, don't tell any of them. And he goes, okay, you have my word. And uh, as we all know, Lucifer is a man of his word. Yeah, he is definitely a devil of his word. Um and so, um, after, uh, at the end of the story, of course, like, Trixie goes home, uh, and in the elevator, she gets a payment from Maze, and, uh, she breaks down the story. And so now, armed with this information, Maze uses her bounty hunter skills, tracks down her mom, uh, who is an old, uh, woman by now, like, in, like, her almost 90s, um, and... Uh, You know, they talk, and she goes, Oh, look at you. You've done great. You didn't need me. You're fine. Like, what, you want me to apologize? Yeah. I'm not going to apologize. She's like, I did it for a reason. Do you want me to apologize? And she kind of just keeps it real short. And Mm -hmm. it's like, what the hell? But, um... Yeah, after some talks with Linda and, you know, kind of, and also having, hearing from Linda's personal experiences, and then, you know, really kind of putting that together for herself, she does not, she finally gets the courage to, you know, talk to her mom and, you know, maybe get some forgiveness and some closure. But then she unfortunately finds out that, you know, recently after they had seen each other, she finally passes. Yeah, which um, I will say that I do like that moment, though, mm-hmm. because uh, you can tell that even even though uh, she's human, she still hasn't, like, lost her demon-y attitude. Yeah. So, so the woman there is like, yeah, she's gone, good riddance. And she's like, did you know her? And it's like, oh, yeah, and she kind of gets a feel for him, and she's like, oh, shit, guys, wrap up. Let's yep. give her a minute. And, and I and I, I love the moment when she finds the poster from the noir episode and she fucking she just smashes that shit. Oh my god, that was that was heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. Really, really good stuff there. Um I, I really mean um her. blanking on her uh mm, Maze's actress. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. She, Leslie Ann Brandt, she did really good job, especially at making you feel things this season so oh, far. Oh, yeah. 100%. Like, like the other thing where she, where she was like, why did she leave me? Mm-hmm. That hit hard. Yeah, when she was like, "Why did she leave me? Why did you leave me?" You know, she was talking. You know, she was talking to Lucifer. Well, she was talking to Linda, and uh, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. she was like, uh, "She was like, Lucifer left me. Chloe left me." Because that was an interesting thing. Where yeah, like, yeah, yeah, because yeah, because in the very beginning of the season, like, like Chloe and Maze kind of used each other because uh, like to fill the Lucifer void. But then when and the Eve void, mm-hmm. but then when Maze kissed her, she was like, "Okay, all right, that's enough." Yep. And uh, so she was like, "Why did Lucifer leave me? Why did Chloe leave me? Why did she leave me?" And she just starts crying. Yeah, that that really got me, man. Like, and Maze, also Maze just stuff uh, super heavy. But also, one funny note was uh, when uh, her and Linda were there and it's like oh we, I'm never gonna leave you and she's like but you're human you're probably gonna die in like what five years and she's like yep. how, and old, she goes, do how old do you I think am? I am and she goes like, I don't know 30 and then like Linda smiles like okay okay we're back we're, we're friends again and she's like oh okay and then uh yep. Which, still, uh, by the still, way, uh, still one of my fa- still one of my favorite like light hard moments again was when she's drinking with fucking Amadeo and she goes, "Yeah, you know, humans count sheep, I count shots." And then like you know, he comes back home and Linda's like, "Oh hey, you know, um, he's like, you know, you look tired. You need a drink?" And she goes, and he goes, "Oh no no no, I was just out with Maze, so I've done enough drinking for at least the next month." <laughs> Millennia. Yeah. 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 But, but yeah, that is cool. Yeah, really. And really also, uh, just quick side note, mm-hmm. I did look it up. That is not her biological daughter. I oh wow, wow. They that's, just did that, a really good. Yeah, that's job. just that, yeah, that's just really good casting. Wow. Um, but yeah, yeah. so um, last but certainly not least, let's talk about Dexter kind of just together. Uh, Chloe and Lucifer. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Just wow. Um, I really like that Lucy stuck to his guns in the beginning. You know, he stayed there, but he also helped from but, hell. But also, uh, you could tell that this, that initially going into this, they thought it was going to be the final season. Mm-hmm. Because um, what is Lucifer dealing with in the first episode? He's dealing with the death of the dude who keeps showing up every premiere. Yep. The ba- so, basically the Lucifer equivalent of Turk from uh, the um uh, the and it's like, shows. I love you man, but every time you show up in my life bad shit bad happens. happens. Yeah. And he's like, "Oh yeah, in about Three minutes, minutes. Uh, somebody, somebody's going to come in here and uh, shoot you in the chest. And that's when we find out that we're in his hell. Yep. And we actually do a little bit of world building because we actually get to see some of the actors in hell. Yeah, 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 the demons. Like the, I thought that the was demons. really great. Mm-hmm. And especially we find out what happens if you try to look at someone who you never saw their face. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. Because I like how he's like, well, hey, if this is just what happened to me, why don't we just take off his hood and see who he is? And, and then it's, yep, just, and it's just like, a, yeah, it's like a faceless demon. It's just like, oh, it's like, yeah, here's the problem, though. You never saw your killer's face. So uh, we can't just do that. It's not that easy. Um, yeah. Really enjoyed that. Um, again, Lucy had a lot of like just big maturity moments here, mm-hmm. um, like really kind of learning to um, understand and communicate with Chloe uh, very well. Um, learning not to give a fuck, which you know you would think that the devil would be the master at that, but like his whole thing, 
he got he had to battle insecurity for the first time with like you know Chloe's ex, and I thought that was really cool how he dealt with that. And again, how Dan assisted with that was just so good. Um, really enjoyed that episode. My favorite episode, just like in terms of like Lucifer, like his character was that meta ass episode with El Diablo. Like yo, oh that's, yeah, that's probably a tie for me with uh, the best episode. Of, of the season with the black and white episode. I, honestly, anytime the fucking title card changes, like that's how you know the episode's gonna be like a next level. Um, but yeah, so yeah, because um, uh, Lieutenant Diablo. Yep. Yeah, and and I love it though because uh, the the Chloe equivalent. Was detective dancer, yep, a stripper from the Ten. fake Lux who became a detective. Yep, and I thought that was I thought that was great. And I also love like the meta jokes that that even people who watching probably wouldn't understand unless they know like the intricacies of behind the scenes, like yep. with the the number two lady and how uh, she was like, yeah. Why would I want to? Why would I want to be in charge? You, you run everything, but also when the show is successful, it's worse, and they need someone to blame. Yep, exactly. I I thought that was that was really cool. I liked all that behind the scenes stuff, and I liked that like Diablo's actor ended up like solving the case by you know deducing the yearning. <laughs> I thought that was that was just that was too good, too mm -hmm. good. Um, absolutely loved that one. Um, uh, of course, the highlight of Lucifer's growth as a character is uh, the finale because he uses literally everything he's learned in the years working with Chloe to save Chloe. Um, and it, and it's just like he even surprises the people around him, yep. especially Ella, which uh, yeah. Anytime we get an Ella and Lucifer team yeah, up. Yeah, solo team up. Yeah, those are always the most fun. Um, like the time that they went to Las Vegas and yeah, he helped to get, her. Yeah to, get, yeah, to get her brother. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was great. Yeah, but but this one, it's just um, like he put together a murder board. Yeah, and he and actually cross-referenced. Yep, all, all the information. Credit cards. Yeah. And, and like, he's like he, whoa, you did all that? And and he's like all serious the entire time. He's not flirting with women. He's not, you know, fucking around. All business. And and he kind of I know this is kind of weird, but he kind of like actually does some of Chloe's mannerisms too. Yeah. Like like when Ella says that she can go to her boyfriend's house because he has the the information. Like, he has some extra information that could help. And he, like, actually snaps like she does. Yep. And points at her and is like, that's good work, Miss uh, Lopez. Thank, thank you, Miss Lopez. Go ahead. Go do that. And it's just <laughs> yeah. like, oh, shit, that's cool. Um, but, yeah, the, that... Dude, the fact that I got to do a serial killer episode, like, a two-parter was fucking awesome. Like, mm -hmm. uh, and, loved and the that fact, shit. And it was a cool twist, though, because it was like... The serial killer was still a serial killer, mm -hmm. but he didn't kill all of the victims, and yep. yet it was someone else. Which, uh, yeah, we already said. Was, yeah, yeah, we already talked about. Um, it's Ella's boyfriend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but, like that was that was that was really good. Um, and so eventually. Like they go and, and rest also, uh, sorry, I just thought about something real quick. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I love how Ella saves the day. Yep. In the end, too, because because uh, yeah, she cause, discovers, yeah, because she, his... yeah, she has she she found like the fucking syringes in his little lab, and she took one. Yep. And so uh, when when they're fighting, she actually stabs him. Yep. And that saves her. Yep. And. Uh, just last thing about Ella real quick. I know we honed too much on her, but 
Like, no, don't worry. About, I, talk, dude, I, I, dude, I was going to say, dude, I fucking love Ella. Any more time we get to talk about Ella, I'm fine. Go ahead. You talk about, like, uh, acting and all that mm-hmm. and how real it is. Like, Amy Garcia, when she came in to interview him and and we still had serious Lucifer and he was like, Miss Lopez like, is strong. I, I She's have, even stronger than she knows. Yeah, and I, I, dude, I do, I really enjoyed like seeing Sirius Lucifer just like stop, hug Ella, and like let her freak out. And she goes, "Yeah, you should have been there. Why weren't you there? Why mm-hmm. weren't you there?" And she just kept and he's punching like, him. Miss Lopez, crying. we can't, we can't get emotional. We need to. Focus. Look, look. Yeah, we need to focus. We need to save Chloe. That's all that matters right now. You can be angry at me all you want later, but we need to save and, um, the detective. I do wonder, we didn't mention this, but I do wonder if it's going to come back. Mm-hmm. The whole fact that uh, the boyfriend said that Ella has a little bit of darkness in her. Well, we do know that, right? Because from the fucking, um, like, the uh, you saw the bonus episodes, right? Um we saw we saw that Ella has a direct connection with fucking Uriel, the angel Not of death. Not Uriel, or no, uh, Azriel? Yeah, it's Azriel. Azriel. Yeah, Azriel. Yeah, because uh, yeah, Uriel is the yeah, that, really that's the one, smarmy that, yeah, that, one. Yeah, that's the one that Lucifer and Amanda ended up having to kill. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, yeah Ella, the her one that Maz- almost killed. Mm-hmm. One that was like involved with Charlotte's death and all that. Yep, yep. But yeah, but um, but yeah. Yeah, so... she ha- she, ha- she has a direct connection. Her imaginary friend turned out to be fucking Azriel, the angel of death. But I just wonder if we're gonna get a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like if that was a hint of something else. Because I I definitely think I definitely think because you know Ella of course is very like spiritually connected. I definitely think she has some kind of like deeper like spiritual sight. That she hasn't really tapped into, which is why she had the connection with Azriel. Um, and that would be the, cool. And also, I like the like similarities that they showed between Ella and Lucifer, because because uh, all throughout that episode, you got to see some of the parallels between the two of them. Mm-hmm. Like he gets mad at himself, and she gets mad at him. And then at the end, after the interview, where they find out that uh, he doesn't know anything about Chloe. They, you notice they both punch a wall. Yep. At two separate times, they punch a wall. Yep. I, I, of course, I really... him, he's got his power, so. Oh, yeah. But mm-hmm. still. But yeah, that that was pretty great. And then you know, of course, like this leads to the end, the climactic end, where like they save Chloe, and then it leads into like a a fucking angel brawl between Mike, Amandiel, and Lucy. And then, of course, and uh, and um, Maze. Yeah, and Maze. Um, luckily, the brothers can handle Maze pretty easily, so Maze isn't really a big issue. So, really, what they're focusing on is Mike. Well, but the, the... well, it was really cool though because um, also since uh, yeah, Elfin uh, okay, in oh, the room, uh huh, Elfin yeah. in the room, Mike is played by Tom. For mm-hmm. for most of that, we saw flashing back of of. Lucy and Mays fighting, and then a Minadil and yeah, Mikey Mike. fighty. Yep. Until oh. finally, Lucifer got the upper hand on Mays, and then came to save his brother. And then yep. the three of them were fighting. Oh yeah, and then also like the the real the cool like flexing the Netflix budget. Um, part of Mikey's plan was to like really trigger a Minadil to the point where. His powers go so haywire that he fully stops time. Mm-hmm. Like, he doesn't slow it down like he normally does. He straight up just, Zawardo pauses time. Which, uh, um, by the way, just real quick, uh, before we get to the last thing of the episode, mm-hmm. which is after the fight, um... What do you think Mikey's plan was? Because he said that his plan hadn't finished, that this was all part of his plan. So I think his plan was... Uh, it, I think his, st- his plan is still working out. I think his plan was to lure out, and I'm going to go ahead and say it here, the big guy. Mm-hmm. Because we already know, that, and Mikey's talked about it, uh, that like he has the big guys here. 
right? He's the only one that can talk to him. And so... Until a meta deal. Yeah, until a meta deal, of course, yeah. But, uh, like, and and that's the thing, right? Well, like I said before, uh, Mike is, like, that little, that annoying-ass little brother who constantly goes and snitches to your parents. So I think his plan was to cause so much of a fuss that dad would have to get involved and punish Lucy and Amenadiel and, of course, praise Michael for bringing this to his attention. Uh, but it's gonna. I think it's definitely going to backfire on him. I, I think that was his plan. That's just my opinion. That's All right. how he I can see it. I don't really know. But I do want to point out one thing, though. Mm-hmm. When all the angels, like, uh, spurt out their wings at the end, which, by the way, again, flexing the Netflix budget, Mm -hmm. having three angels spurt wings wings in the same scene. Did you notice something? Because I noticed something about it. Oh, that Lucy's wings are uh, Lucy's wings are white. uh, Mikey's are black. uh. Mikey's are gray, and the meta deals are gray. Yep. So, I wonder what that means. Um, I, well, so here, so this is this is my thought, and this was just always my opinion, because Lucifer, up until that one point where with Cain, right? Lucifer's never killed anybody. Lucifer, other than mischief, Lucifer has never caused any harm to people. Michael mm-hmm. and Amenadiel. Are God soldiers? Amenadiel is one of the top. Well, uh, like Amenadiel is one of the top. So is, is one of the top warriors, and Michael is legit the leader of the host of heaven. So he commands the armies. He has God's right ear. But uh, like he has. Haven't we seen what? I thought maybe we had seen a meta deal's wings before, and they were white. no. They were they were always they were always blackish. Um, no, a meta deal. Lucy's always been the only one with white wings. Oh, mm-hmm. my bad. Mm-hmm. But but still, um, I wonder. Um, I wonder though well, what uh, Mikey's plan. Does is in revolving around uh oh revolving around uh um, the big guy amenity oh amenity I got gotcha. you yeah same but yeah also with the big guy which uh that was a good moment yeah holy uh, shit man like I said I know Brian told me that he got spoiled because he saw an article but um you know obviously I watched it when um when it dropped. Or like a little bit after it drops, um, like the like the day the day the same day. I didn't watch it at like four a.m. Um, like I used to do with Netflix drop, but I watched it like literally as soon as I woke up up until like I was done, um, and so I had no idea what was going on. And so I was thinking because I I knew God was going to be in the season, right? Because um, that was announced, and you know who was playing him was announced. But I was thinking, okay, that's huge. So that's probably going to be like the season finale cliffhanger, since we, especially because I knew that they were renewed for a season six. I figured they were going to end the season on bam, God. But not nah. well. I uh, they announced God before they announced that they were doing a season six. Yeah, but I thought that. The, but this was. But the season was split into half, right? So I thought that I, was I be get the you. end of the season. And the, to be fair, I wasn't spoiled that God came in. I was just... They said, spoiler shows up in the mid-season finale. And so when I heard the voice, and when I saw the light, I knew it was him. Yep. And man, what an entrance. Children, you know I hate it when you fight. And I'm just like, oh shit, we about to get put in good hands today. And also, one other thing, just real quick, that I love, that's a subtle thing, is you notice every single one of the angels that we've seen so far, 
except for a meta deal, have always been wearing. Yeah, the robes. Suits. Yeah, yeah, the robes are suits. And uh, yeah. here he comes in with like this cardigan sweater type thing. Yeah, Cause he has a literal dad sweater on. I I really appreciate that. Like he was a real dad. And if you look at it right, the way he dresses is very similar to God Johnson. Remember God Johnson? Like the guy the Oh yeah. The the guy Oh the yeah. guy who was like temp a temporary vessel of God or at least mm-hmm. someone who thought he was a vessel of God. And it was very ambiguous whether that was true or not. Cause I mean yep. like, uh, like mom mom act mom definitely was like, Oh, it's him. It's definitely him. So like I'm pretty sure it was. Also, I love that actor, so I hope that it was, because yeah. I love that actor. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, I, I do like that, that they leave a, like, a subtle nod to God Johnson as well. Uh, that was pretty cool. Um, uh, but yeah, it was that was crazy, man. So yeah, um, mm-hmm. overall, man, um, final closing thoughts on the season. Uh, we're getting close to the 10-minute mark in remaining time. Um, so, Well, um, I know that... Uh, I know that uh, Chuck from Supernatural is set to make an appearance, and I'm curious to see how he's going to be and uh, how everything else is going to unfold. Yeah, we don't, in we don't, we don't, two. we don't have all of the we we haven't met all of the arcs yet. So like, he could be. It would be hilarious if he played like. Well, um, it would be hilarious if he like. Played, we know who he's going to play. Uh, yeah, isn't it Metatron? Uh, it's Metatron, right? No. No. Oh, who's he playing? Uh, do you really want to know? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, he's playing a French mercenary. Oh, okay, cool. Um, who runs into Chloe and the team. Gotcha. Um, but, uh, he's a human villain. Okay, cool. Interesting. Um, but, um, but yeah, it, I would like to see the other god, the other gods too, like, maybe, I mean, not the gods, I meant, uh, archangels. Um, cause, uh, we haven't seen Castiel yet, and uh, he's a lot different in this show than he is in Supernatural. They've already said that. I mean, well, yeah, because like uh, he, because uh, like Su- Supernatural didn't really follow the Bible uh, when it came to uh... no, and so he's more of a dancer and likes dancing. Yeah, and that, that would be really funny. Yeah, to because see. because, and, because uh, th- that's the thing, right? Um, I mean, this is the one thing that Supernatural did still follow. Uh, you know, every a- archangel has a twin. As a twin pair, Mikey and Lucifer. Obviously, we saw um, Uriel and uh, Uriel and Azriel, um, and um, a meta deal and uh, fucking um, shit. Uriel, uh, not Uriel. Uh, yeah, no, it is Uriel. Yeah, Uriel. It is Uriel. Yeah, because they're 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 because he called her Yuri. Yeah, they're the twin soldiers. And yeah, um, but it was her. Yeah, and then but Castiel and Gabriel are the two um, are the two uh, musical archangels. Obviously, of course, Gabriel is more most famous as the messenger, but obviously his like angelic weapon and artifact is his trumpet. He produces he yeah, he, and so he uh, leads just, the angelic choir, and Castiel leads the dances. Yeah, so I just saw the time, and so I just want to say that uh, we can maybe due to how bad Rona is and. Uh, how long it's going to be? Maybe we could do like a video on your channel or something about theories coming up. But uh, for now, I just want to say that for part A of season five, I really liked it. It was a lot more intense and a lot more like uh, quantity quality than I expected, even though it lacked on the quantity. Yep. And uh, I cannot wait to see where we go from here. And it was really cool, and I really liked it. Yep. All right. So. Uh, tell us what you guys thought about Lucifer Season 5 Part 1 in the comments down below uh, on the YouTube version and, of course, on uh, the podcast. Uh, you can leave comments as well uh, on the YouTube version. Don't forget to leave the video a like to let us know you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you for re- uh, reaching the end if you've reached it here. Um, also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload new videos because we are getting back to a more consistent upload schedule. But now it is plug time. So, Brian, very quickly, what is coming up on your channel? And, of course, Brian's channel will be linked in the description. 
Uh, it's already listed um, on the side there with my uh, with our related channels. Um, if you go to the actual channel page, go ahead, Brad. I have uh, my channel, just my name, Brian Curtisy, and uh, currently what I'm doing is Winona Earp, and uh, basically that's it. Uh, do you, we got the, I was gonna the say, mid-season finale of that coming up. Uh, do you plan on and, doing an uh, Owl House review? Uh, the season finale for that, you know, aired today. Uh, I might still try to do a late one, uh-huh. but uh, things came up at work and stuff, and so uh, I wasn't able to like have as much okay, cool. free time as I wanted. Okay, cool. And uh, But uh, anyway, uh, anyway, uh, I might also pick up another Sunday show that, uh, even though I'd be late to it, I kind of want to still cover it. Because it's pretty fucking amazing. Uh, Yeah. And uh, so that's going on. But uh, beyond that, I'm waiting and uh, hopefully going to do more in the future. Nice. Okay, so with me, um, of course, uh, this is the main channel, TV Time with Jay. Uh, I'll be doing my TV reviews regularly on here for live action stuff and, you know, American cartoon stuff. And I have a full anime channel, Jay's Caldea, where I post my FGO content and my anime reviews. On Cal- on Jay's Caldea, I have reviews for Agretzko Season 3 and Great Pretender Season 1, both new Netflix anime releases from this week. So definitely check those out if you haven't already. Agretzko is doing really well, so thank you guys for that. Um, I put out my Owl House review because the uh, the season finale dropped at like 3 a.m. last night, so I recorded that video at 4 a.m. and uploaded that. So it's it's been up there for a while now. Uh, that's doing really well. Thank you guys for that. Um, also, I have a Twitch channel where I stream, uh, you know, playing mostly FGO. But I have started doing like a Yu-Gi-Oh little tournament with you know my boy Brian here and our friend Tony. Uh, we had a, we had a blast with that. Brian kicked my ass a couple times. <laughs> Uh, it was great. Definitely, definitely did not go the places that I thought it no, would. No, it was great. It was it was a good time all around. So if you just want to, if you enjoy the podcast and you just want to see us play video games and shoot the shit, uh, definitely join us over on the Twitch. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, I guarantee you, you'll have a good time, even if you have no idea what's going on with the game I'm playing. Uh, you know, we do just casually talk about news and just thoughts on things in general. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, links are in the description, of course. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you, you beautiful devils. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode of Channel Chasers. And next week, we will be talking about the Owl House. So if you loved the Owl House season one, and I did, definitely come back next week for that. But until then, we'll catch you guys later. Peace. Peace.